Hi, I'm Paula Curtis, and I am a uh, MA graduate from Ohio State University in East Asian Studies with a specialty focus on medieval Japanese history. I'm currently about to enter a PhD program at the University of Michigan in history to study the same. I am an IUC graduate of the summer program 2009, and I attended the 10-month program from 2009 to 2010. I run the blog What Can I Do with a BA in Japanese Studies or shinpaidesho.wordpress.com and we've published a number of articles about the IUC and what to do if you intend on applying and once you're there what the coursework is like and so as a part of that IUC series of articles and as a collaborative project with Jamie Cox's vlog project on the IUC on YouTube today I would like to talk about how I funded my stay at the IUC. Uh, I guess I should probably preface this with the obvious that graduate students do not have a lot of money. <laughs> it's a universal constant, I think. Uh, and I may be a particularly good example of this because, uh, for a number of reasons, uh, one of them being that when I began graduate school, I was offered entrance into a summer program. So I graduated with my BA in Japanese studies in 2008, and two weeks after my graduation went directly into graduate school. So there was no buffer zone of me being able to get a job, make a little money, put it away, and plan for graduate school. And uh, incoming as an incoming student, I received a university fellowship, which was a fellowship that not only forbid me from getting a part-time job and making any money, because it's kind of double dipping in government funds if you do that, uh, but also it was a, you know, generous but not overly generous stipend that was livable but not really good for saving a lot of money on top of that. So needless to say, when I decided that I wanted to attend the IUC, I was kind of wondering how am I going to afford this, how is this going to happen, you know, is it possible? And, uh, you know, I had almost no money to my name to really support it. And there are a number of options that are available to students who decide they want to attend the Inner University Center for Japanese Language Studies. Uh, but uh, in my case, the most reasonable way to do so was to apply for a FLAS fellowship, the Foreign, uh, Foreign Language Area Studies Fellowship. And what this fellowship is, is uh, a support for modern language and area studies uh, by the U.S. Department of Education that's offered through many institutions uh, and you can apply for the summer or academic uh, sessions and you can do either or or you can do you know, both. So I applied for both the summer and academic year and was fortunate enough to receive both. And what this means is that my um, my tuition was waived or paid for by my combination of the FLAS fellowship and my graduate school. And then I was given a stipend for the summer and a stipend for the academic year. Uh, as for how much it is, in my case, uh, it was $2,500 dispersed over two months for the summer and $15,000 dispersed over 10 months for the academic year. Now this might vary uh, based on your school or your area, I'm not sure. I've heard some students say their numbers were a little bit different, so it's important that you, uh, if you plan on applying, to check with your individual institution as to what kind of support is being offered. Uh, and, you know, in America, you know, depending on where you live and how you live, this is, you know, pretty manageable support if you have a moderately frugal lifestyle, if you're not out partying every single weekend uh, and traveling a lot. But uh, in Japan, especially recently, you know, this can be somewhat problematic because of the economy and the exchange rate. So it's a little bit more difficult to say that you can get by easily on these numbers, um, especially since you're receiving your money in dollars and not in yen. But, you know, that being said, you know, it can be done. I did it. I didn't starve to death. <laughs> Luckily, I'm still here. So uh, if you don't have that many, um, that much savings in the way of personal finances, then, you know, if you manage your money well, I think that you can still make it work. So one of the first things that you should consider is when your stipend will be dispersed by the institution that is giving it to you. Uh, this, I say this because, you know, I began, like I said, with almost no savings. Uh, I had no other form of support, no family, no other fellowships I was applying for. And, uh, you know, it was very difficult to start out when I made the move to Japan. The way that the payroll system worked for me was that uh, the the last fellowships were dispersed in July and August, and the last working days of the month. 
Now, if you have looked at the IUC application and, you know, seen when the program actually begins in the summer, you should know that it's the 20-something, the 22nd or the 24th. And for me, you know, I arrived the 13th somewhat early. And it was, you know, with no money in my pocket and no expectation of money for almost a month and a half. I think I came with about $2,000 uh, in order to pay for, you know, rent and, and moving and any food expenses that I had. So you have to be aware that these kind of upfront expenses are probably going to be out of pocket and your stipend won't be able to really help you with that except to kind of recover uh, later on. But, you know, after that, they came in smoothly along with the academic year and there was no kind of problems. But you need to consider that as, as far as one of your initial uh, initial expenses when you're you're coming in. Uh, not only that, but so far as I know, the FLAS uh, can only be direct deposited into American bank accounts, unless perhaps you have a Japanese one already set up, so you can do your direct deposit deposit ahead of time. But you know, don't quote me on this. I didn't have a Japanese bank account, so I can't say that for sure. And your stipend will also be in American dollars. So. This meant that every month when my stipend arrived on the 31st or the 30th, I went to my local post office to the ATM, the international ATM, and withdrew the maximum amount of money that my bank would allow so that I could pay my rent and, you know, be sure that was in on time. And, uh, you know, I think for me it was $400, but you also are going to end up having international um, withdrawal charges. Of, I think mine was $3. And then the conversion rate on top of that will sap some of your money out. I think every time I took out $400, I lost about 50, which was sad, but those are unfortunately the times. Um, and as for my actual living conditions and supporting those, I think I was one of the few students who did homestay. There was maybe three of us tops. Um, this is because in part I was a summer student. And some of the summer options, like weekly and monthly mansions, can be quite expensive. And if you're staying for the academic year as well as the summer, you may want to consider other options. Um, for me, I also really, really wanted to do homestay, so I had decided ahead of time that was going to be my plan. And it was nice because I didn't have to sign up for utilities, I didn't have to buy any furniture. My homestay family, uh, you know, I paid them and they supplied two of my three meals a day. So it was the cheaper option for me at the time, but, you know, that really depends on where and what homestay as well, so it's, it's very individualized. But I, I think I can safely say with the cost of housing in Japan what it is that if you have a FLAS and only a FLAS, no personal finances that are going to support you in addition to that, then finding your own private apartment is not really going to be an option. And it may be to your advantage to go ahead and do IUC sponsored housing like Toriyumi Haimu or Star Heights or you know whatever they helped you find. You know, plus you will also really have to watch your money. You know, you're not going to be eating out every night at really expensive restaurants, and the number of times you can go into Tokyo to party every weekend might be more limited than you like. But you know, I did get out. I didn't buy tons and tons of presents for people or anything. I, but I did get out to eat and go out with friends, and I did get, did get to party in Tokyo every now and then. Um, so I was able to still have a good time, even though it wasn't a lot of money to work with. So I guess my overall message is that having a, a dire lack of funds as your circumstances and going to the IUC and going to Japan uh, on a FLAS fellowship, it's somewhat difficult, but still manageable. I would suggest that you take some savings and have that prepared and have a backup plan. But with the twelve fifty a month that the uh, FLAS Fellowship offers you, you can live if you live frugally. Um, but you really need to have good money management and time management skills and know how to limit yourself and, you know, really what to do with that cash in your pocket. So, you know, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the blog or a comment on the video. Um, if you have any, or you can email us at shimpai.theshow at gmail.com. I encourage you to read the rest of our articles on the IUC, as well as Jamie's other vlogs on his IUC YouTube channel. Thanks so much for listening.